Right folks, welcome back to the channel. Here we have the German 30. So this is requested on the channel by somebody. So here we have the GER 30 or DAX as, as some people call it. And here I'm going to be going over an analysis as to where I think this particular market is going to head to next. So what we have over here is we have the monthly time frame in front of us. So this is the monthly time frame of GER 30, right? So I don't spend too much time on the monthly, but the only thing you can depict from the monthly time frame here is that we've had a breaker structure over here. Again, what validates the breaker structure is the fact that we've broken with a body. So this here wasn't the break. The break occurred in this level over here because we want to see a clear break of structure that forms with a body, right? So this is a quick gem from this video, right? A break of structure occurs with a body. And if we don't see a break of structure with a body, it's typically a liquidity sweep, right? And we see this over here in price action, right? So if we zoom into the most recent structural highs and lows, Again, the trend here has been established, right? So what I'm going to do is if I use black dots to understand how the trend is forming, right? So this is orange. So if I quickly change that to black, we understand that we have a structural high, right? And we have a structural low down here. This structural low produced a structural high, right? This structural high didn't actually break structure to the downside. This is what I was talking about just now earlier, right? This here was a wick. This month over here wicked below so this is back in 2019 2020 this here is a sweet of liquidity we haven't seen a strong break below in fact we haven't seen a break below this is a sweep of liquidity right so this is the yellow box i'm going to use this as a yellow box and this represents a liquidity sweep in the markets again it represents our lower high and this lower high over here in black goes and produces a new high up here higher high higher low okay this is the basics of smc right this is the basics of smc how i'm marking out my most recent market structure on GER 30. So now if we go into the most recent price action, because this is what we need to be dealing with, right? What we have over here is we had a, we've had a break of structure to the upside, right? So this is our BOS or our break of structure to the upside, okay? So once we've had a break of structure, right, there's two things we can anticipate, right? The markets can either go up or they can either go down. And we need to be aware of retracements because we understand simply how markets work, right? Markets don't just move up forever, right? So markets will produce a high and then retrace and then another high and then retrace right so we need to understand we don't want to get caught up in these retracement faces we in these retracements over here so this is a retracement over here let's label that in red so you don't want to get caught up in this phase and you don't want to get caught up in this phase either these are retracement phases of the market so it's important to understand that these retracement phases occur above an old high so this here is an old high in the markets when we break structure to the upside, this is when we can expect a pullback, anticipate a pullback at some point. I'm not saying we're going to get a pullback now, but we could get a pullback at some point. And that's simply because we've had structure break to the upside. OK, so if I take price down now to the daily time frame again, let's go to the daily time frame with the daily time frame. Right, We understand we want to look for the late. We want to look for the last area before structure changed okay the last area before structure changed and this is how i'm currently viewing market structure on the daily time frame so now we're down on the daily time frame again this is a structural low right this is the structural low we have to the left and this structural low gave us a retracement up here now this high produced a new low down here okay so this is how i'm looking at structure right a basic overview of market structure now from here we understand that this high to the left has been broken just like this. So this here represents our break of structure, shift of market structure, BOS, market structure shift. Now from here, we understand that we've had markets giving us new all time highs, right? So very simply to mark out the structure, if I were to mark this out for people quickly, we have a structural high, structural low, structural high, structural low, structural high we did have a break to the downside and now we've just continued higher so structural high structural low and we've had a structural high okay so the most recent structural range we're dealing with is what we call our dealing range okay this is our dealing range so we've had a break of structure to the upside just over here so we've un we understand we've had a break of structure 
So we understand we're bullish in this market. So our dealing range is the next thing we want to look at. And our dealing range on the DAX 30 has been projected now from this swing low up to this swing high. So this is very simple. When you use the Fibonacci tool, you want to understand that there's two areas we're interested in. Well, actually three areas, to be fair. The first area is if I bring the chart to the left so we can see that. The first area we're interested in is the EQ or the equilibrium. Now, this is quite self-explanatory. It's the midpoint between this swing high and this swing low. So it's the midpoint, the 50% level, the equilibrium. Now, on either side of the equilibrium, we have two ranges we are, we are interested in. We have a discount, which is down here. And we have a premium, which is up here. Both of these are significant when it comes to our analysis, right? So what we've seen over here is we've seen price just touch the pre, just touch the equilibrium level over here, the 50% level over here. We've seen price just touch this level. So it's important to understand our fair value gaps, which give rise to our inefficiency, right? So here we have a fair value gap in the market, right? ICT concepts 101, basics of ICT concepts. We have a fair value gap over here, which I label in blue. So this is a fair value gap in price here. Now, this fair value gap gives rise to a POI. So this is our point of interest over here, our POI. POIs I normally label in gray, just so people don't get confused. This is a daily POI. And what makes this a daily POI is simply because when we have an equilibrium, so this line over here represents an equilibrium. Anything below the equilibrium is a discount. So we understand what validates this POI from a smart money concept perspective is that we understand we're bullish. So we've had that breaker structure the breaker structure represented by this arrow over here. So if I bring your attention back, we've seen a breaker structure over here, right? That's the first thing. The second thing we've seen is that we've seen price leave a fair value gap, which I've labeled in blue. So this is our fair value gap over here. And the third thing we've identified is that we're in a discount. With these three things in mind, this POI becomes valid. And so it's important to understand that if we were to have a retracement in this particular market, right, we've seen somewhat of a retracement, right? We've seen a, you could call a minor retracement that just touched the equilibrium over here. But if we were to continue lower, right, if price did give us any kind of bearish indication to go lower, we could be seeking this POI over here. And that's simply because of the rules of smart money concepts or ICT, right? A POI must break structure. So if I quickly go over this again, we must break structure. So that's our first rule of structure. We must have a break of structure, right? The second rule we need to have is that we need to have a fair value gap or an inefficiency because we understand the market goes from premium to discount, discount to premium, targeting inefficiencies or fair value gaps. And the third thing we're looking for is the fact that we are in the discount, like I've just said, below the equilibrium level. So from here, how am I looking at DAX? What's my overall narrative on DAX? You know, people in the comments ask me, where do I think DAX, DAX is going to go? So overall, the higher time frames are bullish. So we understand that price is well within its rights just to continue higher. We've had a bullish start this week anyway. Sorry, this day. Sorry, this week, should I say. We've had a bullish start over here. But if we were to continue down with this retracement, that's no issues because I would expect price to get down to this level over here if the retracement continues. And this price point is 17,176. So for those who are interested, it's 17,176. And that's where the deep, that's where the daily POI lies. But what's more important to understand is not the price point, but how we got to that price point using the concepts of SMC and ICT in conjunction to build the story, build the narrative, okay? So now from here, if we, not, if we notch down one more time frame, what we have over here is we have our four hour structure. And this is where things get more interesting. So the four hour structure is of course bearish, right? We saw a change of character or a chalk or whatever you wanna call it. We've seen price break structure to the downside. Sorry. So we've had a break of structure just over here. This is our four hour boss, four hour boss. If I just get rid of those. We've had a four hour boss over here, bearish boss to the downside. And now from here, our structure on the four hour is bearish, right? We've had a bearish shift of structure, right? So we've seen price come down over here. If I quickly label this in orange, because the four hour structure I normally label in orange. So this is orange over here. We've seen price head lower, head higher, and head lower again. So from here, we're on the four hour time frame. We're on the four hour time frame now, and we've had two breaks of structure to the, to the downside. We've seen a break of structure just over here as well. So we've had two breaks of structure to the downside.
FOSS. Now, from here, our most recent dealing range on the four hour time frame exists from this swing high down to this swing low over here. So, this is a structural dealing range or simply a dealing range for short, right? So, we have a swing high, swing high, and we have a swing low down here. Swing high, swing low, right? Perfect to understand this, very important to understand this. Now, another thing that I need to bring to your attention is the fact that we have a buy side liquidity pool over here. This here is a massive buy side liquidity pool, right? So this is a trend line phantom or a buy side liquidity pool, right? Let's quickly label that buy side liquidity, BSL for short, buy side liquidity. So it's important to understand that the market has a reason for higher prices, right? Because we understand markets seek liquidity and fair value gaps. We have unmitigated fair value gaps just above us, right? So we have an unmitigated fair value gap over here. Fair value gaps I mark out in blue. So we have a fair value gap just up here. We have a fair value gap just up here. And like I said previously, we have a ton of liquidity over here. So we have reason for higher prices. Now from here again, we have an unmitigated fair value gap just over here. Okay, this is also an unmitigated fair value gap. And this is what gives rise to the POI over here. So this is our POI. So the POI I mark out in orange, sorry, not in orange, in gray. This is a four hour point of interest or a four hour POI. Okay, this is exactly what we're interested in, a four hour POI, just like this. So my overall narrative when it comes to the German or the DAX, GER30 -R is quite simple, right? If we get a reaction from this POI, if this POI does get a reaction and it starts to follow through, I do expect price to get down to a level that's quite close to where we had our daily POI. So our daily POI, if I quickly mark that up, our daily POI, oh, I've taken it off. So our daily POI is simply over here, like I've said previously, right? right like we went through the daily time frame. This is the daily POI, okay? Right. So if I quickly mark that out. So now that we now if we go down to the four hour time frame, if this four hour POI were to hold this daily, this daily POI will become the next point of interest. Right. This daily POI. If this POI holds, it's very important to understand if this POI holds. Right. However, we need to be aware of both sides of the market because the market goes up or down and it doesn't care about my analysis or yours. If we see a clear shift of structure from here in this this POI doesn't hold, right? We could then see higher prices sweeping this liquidity and just continuing higher and higher up with the trend, seeking inefficiencies and fair value gaps, right? So to answer people's questions, it all depends on how we react from this POI, okay? It all depends how we react from this POI. This POI is an interesting area on the German 30 or the DAX. And this is how I frame my analysis on the DAX, right? So if you like this video, give it a like and thumbs up. And I look forward to seeing all of you in the next one.